welcome in the name of Jesus to all who have come to worship him. Let's give thanks to God and rejoice in the fact that we have fellow believers who've gathered here with us today to worship uh, the king as the crowd did on Palm Sunday long ago. For our worship service, we'll follow the order of worship that you find printed in the bulletin. And today is Palm Sunday, so we're going to begin our service with a procession of the palms. <coughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today we come together to begin the solemn celebration of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to contemplate his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion his entry that culminated at the empty tomb and follow him with a lively faith, united with him by baptism, we shall share in his resurrection and new life. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please join with me in singing the opening psalm of the day, Psalm 24. Let us pray. God, our Father, we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as a king by those who shouted Hosanna and spread their clothing and palm branches in his path. Accept our praise and listen to our prayers as we rejoice in our triumphant King, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We sing the opening hymn, hymn number 133. <laughs> Yes. 
in Christ, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am dead in sin for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. By the death and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus Christ, death has been swallowed up forever. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the well-being of all people everywhere that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of eternal life as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we pray. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ as he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. So may we always hail him as our king and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first scripture lesson for this Palm Sunday is the Old Testament lesson recorded in the book of the prophet Zechariah chapter 9 beginning at verse 9. Jesus fulfills this Old Testament prophecy as he rides into the city of Jerusalem. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Here ends the first scripture lesson. We hear the singing of the choir.
rise for the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate through the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue by singing the hymn of the day, hymn 716, printed in the Christian Worship Supplement book. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 9. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, about a week and a half ago, the property chairman and myself were searching for a concrete chainsaw that we could rent to repair the broken front porch here at church. We were exiting the local Home Depot here in Lake Zurich and a man passed us going in the opposite direction wearing one of those red MAGA hats. You know, one of the hats that says, Make America Great Again. And I jokingly turned to the chairman and I said, maybe we should go punch that guy out. Now, I meant that as a joke, of course. You perhaps have heard in the news that sometimes people who wear those hats encounter others who don't exactly like what that hat has to say. It was also, I thought, a big joke because the man wearing the hat was about six foot five, 300 pounds, and there was no way that anyone was going to mess with him. But people do that, don't they? They wear hats that say things or have emblems on them. Things that represent what they are in favor of, what they like. If you walked into church today wearing a Cubs hat, I would rightly assume that you like the Cubs. And if you encounter someone who's wearing one of those blue hats that has gold lettering on it, and maybe the name of a ship on it. You've likely encountered uh, a veteran who served in the Navy and they're very proud of their service. And that's why they're wearing that hat. It made me think, what if the people on Palm Sunday were wearing hats? What would their hats have on them? Well, of course, one word, right? It's the word Hosanna. But what does that word mean? I mean, the people shouted it. The kids shouted it. The people cried out, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. It sounds like a word of praise. We're going to sing it later on today. We always sing it as part of our communion liturgy when we sing the Sanctus, the Holy, 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 it says right in there, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. But what does that word mean? To find out, I think you need to go to Matthew chapter 1 and remember what the angel said to Joseph, husband of Mary, in a dream. Joseph was thinking about divorcing Mary because he knew that baby wasn't his. When an angel told him, no, don't be afraid to take her home as your wife. And oh, by the way, you don't need to search a baby name book. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means savior. And the name Jesus comes from the Old Testament name Joshua or Yeshua. That brings us to what the people chanted and shouted on Palm Sunday. What did they say? They said, Hoshia comes from the name Joshua. It means save. And then they added a little word at the end of it, Na, which means now. Let me put it together for you. Hoshia, na, 
Hosanna. What does the word mean? Save us now. And those three words are going to serve as the theme for our text today as we continue our series, Three Words of Truth. Save us now. Those words were shouted by the crowd to the one sitting on the colt, namely to the king. It was once again the time of the year to celebrate the Passover and people would head toward Jerusalem to do that. Passover was the annual remembrance of God's deliverance of his people from bondage in Egypt. But of course, every Passover pointed ahead to the deliverance that God would grant to all people through the Lamb of God, Jesus, and through the shedding of his blood. So the pilgrims came, and many of them came from that area around Galilee where there was a rather large Jewish population. They would come to the city, set aside the lamb to be sacrificed on Sunday, the Sunday before Passover, and they would care for that lamb for four days until it was sacrificed. And as the pilgrims headed toward the city of Jerusalem, if they were, say, in Jericho, way down by the Dead Sea, they would start going up and ascending and climbing and going up to the city of Jerusalem on a higher elevation. And as they went, since they didn't have iPhones or anything else to do, they would sing. And in the book of Psalms, you find several Psalms of Ascent. Psalms that you would sing as you were going up to the city of Jerusalem for the Passover. And Psalm 118 is one of those Psalms, and right there in the Psalm, you find these words, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So Jesus mounted a colt at Bethany, headed toward the city, and the people praised him for all the miracles that he had performed. There were many who followed behind, those who came from Galilee, and there were also many who went ahead. Those were likely people that heard Jesus was on his way, came out of the city, wanted to see for themselves proof of Jesus' greatest miracle, the living Lazarus, and then led the procession into the city of Jerusalem. All singing, all praising, Hoshia Na, save us now. Please note, first of all, that those words, save us now, were directed at the guy sitting on the cold. They were directed at Jesus. And Jesus accepts the people's petition. You heard in our gospel lesson for today how the Pharisees wanted to quiet the crowd and they appealed to Jesus and Jesus refused. I'm sorry. I'm not going to quiet these people. They're, they're requesting something that's perfectly appropriate to request from the Savior. They are asking for salvation. But do you think that they all truly understood what they were asking for? as they sang, Hosanna. I mean, do you think they all truly believed in Jesus as the one who had come to grant salvation? Do you think that they all realized, oh yes, we are asking for the, our greatest need, salvation for our souls? I'm sure there were many who did. But I'm guessing there were also people who were caught up in the moment Kind of like people who are at a sports arena and all of a sudden a chant goes up for one of the players, MVP, MVP. And people are like, what, what's that all? Well, let's just join in, MVP, MVP. I'm sure there were people like that as well. And we do hear that there were curious people in the crowd as well who asked, who is this guy? They had no idea who Jesus was. Whatever the case, Hoshia Na, save us now, was directed at the King Jesus riding on the colt 
and he gladly accepted that request. Hoshiana was directed at the lowly king. Who is it that makes such a request? It's those who truly know they need salvation. This past week, there were six Chicago police officers who were honored for an act of rescue that they performed this past winter. There was, there was a man named Eric Gale, and he was walking his dog along the shores of Lake Michigan when his dog went into the water, slipped into the icy, frigid water. And Eric went in after his dog. He was able to retrieve his dog, but suddenly discovered that he was unable to get out of the frigid, icy water. Oh, he tried. He struggled. Tried to get Claw's way out, but soon he realized he couldn't. And he said this this past week, I knew that without help, I couldn't get out of the lake and I would die there. And so he started yelling. That's the same thing you and I know, right? We're stuck. There's no escape from the lake of burning sulfur. There's no escape from eternal condemnation. We can try as we might. There is no way out. And, why, and that is why, people of God, when we came in this room this morning, what did we do? We started with a cry for help. Hoshia na, save us now. We're sinners in thought, word, and deed, and deserve nothing but eternal condemnation. But unlike Eric, instead of saying, help, anybody out there, help, save me. Your cry and mine is directed at the guy who's seated on the colt. He's the only one that can help. Can't save ourselves. Goodness knows we've tried. No, our petition is directed at the only one who can help, that king who rides into the city of Jerusalem in a lowly fashion. And yet, nonetheless, he is a king, and he's willing to do the work of a king. And what is that work? To save his people. He's an army of one, ready to go into battle against the hosts that are arrayed against him in the city of Jerusalem. And he is willing to lay down his life so that he can answer that appeal, right? Save us now. Ho, she, ah, na. And so we cry out with the crowd on Palm Sunday, you on the colt, save us now. You on the colt, help us. We can't, we can't do it on our, on our own. We've tried. We know it's impossible. Only you can do this work. In Psalm chapter 3, verse 4, Psalm of David, ironically written when David was fleeing from his rebellious son Absalom, David prayed this, I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. God's holy mountain is Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Hoshiana, save us now. God answers that. Here comes Jesus, right? Riding into the city. Hoshiana, save us now. Jesus offers himself to be abused, condemned, and crucified. Hoshiana. Jesus gives his life and declares the work of salvation complete. Save us now, a cry directed at the king on the colt. Hoshiana, save us now serves as a good motto for his kingdom. Groups, organizations, even countries will have mottos that they go by. For the longest time, the motto of our nation was e pluribus unum, from the many one. But in 1956, Congress changed it to In God We Trust. You think that would happen today? The Congress would declare our nation's motto to be in God we trust. A recent survey indicates that now in America there are more people who say, I don't believe in any, any God, sorry, I'm irreligious, 
Then there are the total number of Catholics in our country. There are more people who deny the existence of God than there are the total number of evangelicals in this country. There are more people in this country that say there's no God than those who are part of mainline Protestantism. So maybe our nation's motto needs to be changed in no God we trust. Did you know that our church has a motto as well? Rooted in the word, growing in faith, reaching out to our uprooted world. Did you know that Jesus' kingdom has a motto as well? Hoshiana, save us now. Oh, that's a great motto, right? Because what's Christ's kingdom all about? It's all about salvation. I wonder if the crowd on Palm Sunday understood that. Try to imagine if all of them were wearing baseball hats, what would those hats say? Well, I'm guessing some of the hats would say, make Israel great again. All of the disciples would be wearing those hats, right? We know what they wanted. They wanted the expulsion of those nasty Romans. They wanted free bread and free fish every day. They wanted Jesus care. Free health care, right? They wanted Jesus to take all of their troubles and make them go away. They wanted happiness. They wanted an earthly kingdom. That is what they wanted. And they wanted this of Jesus now. Nah, right? Hoshia, nah, now Jesus. Because Jesus, in their mind, blew it once before. They wanted to make him their earthly king after he fed the 5,000. And he said, sorry. What you really need is me, the bread of life. Hoshia, nah, save us now. A wonderful motto for Christ's kingdom. But did the people understand that? Did they, they grasp it as they cried out, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David? Uh, I don't think so. Well, after riding into Jerusalem, and after being condemned by the Jewish council, Jesus stood in front of a Roman governor named Pilate and he declared, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is from another place. My kingdom doesn't have any of the characteristics of an earthly kingdom. I don't have an army that's coming to my rescue. My followers, they split. They scattered. There's nobody. Just me. And so, again, that motto for Christ's kingdom is an appropriate one. Save us now. His kingdom exists not to evict or condemn Romans, but to save Romans and Greeks and Jews and Gentiles. His kingdom is a kingdom of salvation. And the people cried out correctly, save us now, Hosanna, in the highest. Where does this kingdom come? From on high. It's according to God's plan. It comes directly from God's throne to carry out salvation for all mankind, including you and me. And what is it that Jesus commands members of his kingdom to do? Proclaim the good news. In other words, proclaim the message of salvation. Because his kingdom is one of salvation. Proclaim it as a full and free gift. Jesus, save us now. What a wonderful motto for a kingdom that's all about salvation. And, of course, every motto deserves a great logo. What's the logo for the Christian church on earth? It's the cross, right? But there was one before that one. And it, it was the logo of the fish. That's an easy one to make. Two curved lines, two that extend for a tail. Why? Why was that a symbol for Christianity? Well, the word in Greek, Koine Greek, for fish, ichthus, 
the Christians use to represent five words. And the five words are these, Jesus, Christ, Son of God, Savior. In a certain sense, you, those five letters are bookended by salvation, right? Jesus means Savior, and then salvation. How appropriate, right? Because God's kingdom, Christ's kingdom, is all about salvation. Visible church bodies can use the cross, the fifth, but it always has to be all about salvation. In the book of Revelation, chapter 7, John sees a glimpse into heaven, and what does he see? In a certain sense, he sees a Palm Sunday crowd. He sees people from every tribe, nation, language, and tongue, and they are wearing white robes, and they are standing before the throne and before the Lamb, and they have in their hands palm branches. And they start to shout, and here is what they shout. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. They shouted about what the Palm Sunday crowd shouted about. Salvation, save us now. And they shout what we shout today as well. Jesus, King, save us now. We know that your kingdom is all about salvation. I don't know how I ran across this, but in the early part of 2019, there was an election for the president of the African country of Nigeria. A man by the name of Akitu Obi ran his presidential campaign with this slogan, Save us now. Short. Son, S-U-N, save us now. I'm guessing that Akitu thought that if he got elected, he could do a bunch of saving, save the economy, save, save things in Nigeria. Unfortunately for him, he did not get elected president. But his logo was everywhere, on Facebook, on t-shirts, on hats, save us now. Now, I'm not much of a hat wearer, but I, I can't help but think if, if you were Jesus sitting on that donkey and you were looking at the crowd and people were wearing hats, what would those hats say? Well, I'm guessing some would say, make Israel great again. And I'm guessing some might say, we hate you, Jesus. But then again, of course, there would be others that would say, save us now. Hoshia na, right? How appropriate an appeal that's directed at that king on that colt. How appropriate it serves as a motto for his kingdom. How appropriate that his church in heaven and on earth, even on this day, continue to cry out that appeal, save us now. And as in the day of Palm Sunday, when Jesus didn't answer at all with words, but he answered with actions, right? He rode into the city. He gave his life. He won salvation. He answers today as well as you and I cry out, Hoshiana, save us now with the absolution. For the sake of Jesus, your sin is all forgiven. With the good news of salvation in the gospel and with his own body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Save us now. Yes, absolutely. I hear your cry and grant your appeal. Amen. The peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We now worship God with our offerings.
rise for prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, save us now. We, your people, join our voices today with the Palm Sunday crowds. We join our voices with those who surround your throne above, holding palm branches in their hands, crying out about salvation. Yes, Lord, you know our every earthly need, but you are honored most highly when we, your people, acknowledge our greatest need and cry out for salvation from sin and death and the devil. When your church on earth is tempted to focus on earthly things and when your church on earth is nudged into the realm of politics, grant that your church on earth, especially this congregation of believers, may remain focused on the main thing, namely salvation. Bless your people this week so that our attention may remain on you, Jesus, and your accomplishing the work of salvation for all people. Let your church on earth find its purpose in proclaiming, proclaiming and offering salvation through faith in you. We ask this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who willingly died under the curse of this world's sin so that we may live forever in the light of God's blessing. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord, God, King of the universe. Before the foundation of the world, you chose to redeem us with the precious blood of your Son, a lamb without blemish or defect. We give you humble and heartfelt thanks. The iniquity in which we were conceived has been cleansed by the mystery of his holy incarnation. Our self-absorbed youth has been sanctified by his birth, circumcision, and obedience. Our self-willed lives have been brought into conformity with your holy will by his baptism, fasting, and temptation. The head of our adversary, the serpent, has been crushed by Christ's bloody agony, sweat, and scourging. The gloomy portal of death has become the gate to everlasting life through his precious cross, death, and burial. Strengthen our faith through this heavenly food that as partakers in Christ's glorious resurrection we may, together, recline at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And hear us now as we join in praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O oh, holy spot. distribution. We'll sing the Palm Sunday hymn number 131 in the red hymnal, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. All things are now ready. Let us come. Christ given into death for all of your sins. the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Christ given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you give us to eat and drink in this sacrament. We pray that through this precious gift of yourself, you would feed our faith, nourish our hope, and strengthen our love, that we might live as your people now, and as your guests forever at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 130. the visitors have joined us for worship today. There are a few announcements. In about 15 minutes we'll have uh, Sunday school. It'll begin in the fellowship hall in the lower level and then uh, adult Bible class uh, that'll be held in the cafe. We're bringing to a close today our study of creation. We had scheduled uh, for our green team to have its pine car derby at noon today. And we'll need to talk to the two families about uh, that since half of the green team isn't here today because <laughs> of the weather. And then confirmation class is at 6 p.m. this evening. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, the weather, if you look outside, it looks like a blizzard outside. So please be careful on your way home. On the other hand, every time it snows, you and I should rejoice because in the Bible we are told, though our sins be as scarlet, for the sake of Christ they shall be as white as snow. 
This coming week uh, is Holy Week, so we have two special services, one on Monday, Thursday evening at 7 p.m., and then our Good Friday uh, Tenebrae service, Service of Darkness, is at 7 p.m. as well. And then this coming uh, Sunday is Easter Sunday, and our schedule is an 8.30 breakfast, and then uh, 9.30 Easter worship, and then after that, a meaningful egg hunt. And so parents with children, please set aside time to participate, uh, allow your kids to participate in that as well. If you want to sign up for an Easter lily uh, to purchase one, today is the last day for that. If you want to sign up to bring something for the breakfast, today is the last day for that as well. The Wednesday after, the Wednesday after Easter, our congregation is going to be hosting the Chamber of Commerce for uh, breakfast uh, uh, business before hours. And if anybody would like to help with uh, getting that ready, please talk to me after the service. Uh, thank you to the choir for singing today, and thank you to uh, the members who came and, and worked in cold weather to clean up the church property. There is something to eat and drink after the service today. You're all invited to stay for that. If you'd like to take a palm branch home today with you, and uh, uh, use it to uh, remember uh, the events of Palm Sunday. Feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to take the hat along, you can do that as well. Those are the announcements.